In this video, we're going to do a quick build review over the CBS 160, and everything you see that I do with this will apply to the CBX 150. Both of these are available to purchase from our mattinproductions.com. Link is below. This one will be $29.99, and this one should be $31.49. So this CBX150 and this CBS160 are both frames that I developed and they share the exact same um, body here. The only difference is this bottom plate where on this one I just happened to stretch it out 10 uh, millimeters so I could get a little bit of stretch out of it. And this video will cover both basics. They're gonna, they would require the exact same components. So whatever you see for this will apply to this. All right, real quick, we're going over the components. I'm going to go into this build, and these are the parts that I recommend. I have the Brother Hobby 3600 KV 1407 motor, which the Rudder Geeks 1407 motor, 300 KV motor would also work probably just as well. And it's actually a little bit lighter. And uh, here I have the, the brand new 12 amp Emax Bullet ESC. As far as I know, this is about as small as you can get, which would be perfect for this build. I have the Run Cam Mini Swift, which I specifically designed this frame for. And then we have the Pico BLX uh, clone here, and the equivalent Innova OSD clone also to go with this. So now that we have uh, what we're going to use in this build, let me get this frame to our part, and we'll start putting our ESCs to our motors and get those mounted. All right, so I got all four motors soldered to their ESCs here. I've went ahead and desoldered the uh, the ground to the ESC because there's nowhere on the on the uh, flight controller to solder it to. And I've also went ahead and put a sticky pad under each one. And I want to show something here. These components here kind of stick out on the bottom there. So make sure your sticky pad will cover that because you don't want to short anything on the bottom of this ESC. Because like I said, these aren't covered um, with anything on the bottom either. So just be careful of that. I also have my two power wires already soldered to here and rented the bottom and zip tied through these uh, slots I have here. I've already pre-soldered these wires on here. I've soldered the PPM connection here because I'll be running D-Shot which just requires me to run motor number one to that middle ESC or excuse me, um, solder connection right there. So now that this is ready to go, I'm going to start pre-tinning these pads and start bolting motors on and running up wires to here. All right, so I got everything soldered on here. As you can see, it's looking pretty clean. I'm really liking the wires on these uh, Emacs 12 amp ESCs. They seem to be pretty high quality. So I want to get zoomed up in here for you. We're going to mount this uh, video transmitter next. And since I pre-soldered these pins, it's just a matter of dropping the pins on. And then this board you can set it right on top here and then solder those pins to make sure they're straight but if you decide to run a different uh, video transmitter and different flight controller I want to show you something else that I have that comes with this kit and that's this plate right here in case you use one another uh, small size video transmitter uh, you can use shorter standoffs here and then you can just melt this right on top and then I've got these slots on here to where you can zip tie the video transmitter on there to just to give you another option so there yeah so there's that and let me get this uh, video transmitter started on here and we'll continue with our assembly alright so I've got my video transmitter mounted and I've got my DSMX cable wire ran down underneath here, back out here, and out right here. And then I've also taken the two wires and shortened them up and combined them to plug in my uh, my camera. And here for the uh, the antenna, I mounted out, around, and under to help uh, alleviate the pressure from bending this connector right here. So now that I've got this all ready, all I've got to do now is put this on and my satellite receiver which I is, which is DMSX is right here um, if it's a little bit thicker you would have to slide it back a little bit just to make sure this camera doesn't hit but and then I see I also got the the camera put in so put this on throw some props on and we sh should be able to get uh, what the weight will be of this guy 
Here is our fully assembled CBS 160. You can see I've got a pretty decent amount of stretch because here's the distance between the props here. And then if you look to the front, this is how close they are here. So this should give you um, increased pitch control, which should increase your elevation control when you're flying. So that that's the idea behind uh, the stretch anyway. So let's get this weighed now that we've got it all together. All right, so we're coming in at just under 165 grams. Now that does have everything on here, with the exception of the connector here. I actually left the wire about an inch longer to make up for that weight that you'd have for either your XT30 or XT60, whatever's that you use. So this with a 650 million power four cell should be pretty quick, and I believe it will be right around that 250 gram mark. Now, if you do build the 150, you're gonna lose about two to four grams right around there because the, the frames, this frame's about 1.6 grams heavier if I remember right. And you're gonna lose about half a gram in, in the uh, shorter wires that you have. If you like this video, please check out the link below to racedayquads.com. That's where I uh, prefer to buy my parts. They carry these Brother Hobby Motors actually, which are some of the best motors you can get for a micro build like this. And any parts you buy through them will help me make more videos and build more new frames and all that good stuff. So I'm Corey with Crash and Burn Racing and thank you for watching.